Well, testicular cancer is the, the commonest cancer, the most prevalent cancer, uh, for men in, between the ages of about 20 and 35. It affects about 2,000 men each year, and your risk of getting testicular cancer is about 1 in 400. Um, yet, it's a very easily treatable cancer. It can be, if you examine your testicles and get used to examining your testicles, you can detect it at a very early stage, and if you do so, the cure rate is very good. The doctor says, do you know what we're feeling? No. He says, hey, I have a feel. And when you point to anything, oh, yeah, there is something there. And you could feel it. Knowing that had been in me for some time, it was quite a scary thought. It's more of a dull ache. That's how it happened to me anyway. It doesn't, it's not, it's not like a sharp pain. It's just a sort of feeling of wrongness. Yeah, I mean, I had a condition as a child, which meant I had to go and have regular checkups with a surgeon. Uh, so, I mean, luckily it was him that found found out that I had the, the tumour as it ended up to be. Done an ultrasound scan. Again, you're only able to associate ultrasound with babies. And uh, I was told, I wasn't even told it was cancer, it, was, it is a tumour. And they gave me a book saying understand testicular cancer. And it was then that it, it dawned on me that I got cancer at 19 years old. The commonest si sign and symptom of testicular cancer is a, is a developing a lump in the testis or a change in the size or the shape of the testis, sometimes associated with this testicular discomfort, uh, sometimes just a pure swelling of the testis, um, occasionally signs of such as back pain or a cough or enlargement of the breasts, um, which are usually signs of more advanced cancer. My testicle got heavier and noticeably harder as well. So instead of being sort of a little bit malleable, um, it, was, it was quite big and hard um, and, it, and heavy and it didn't feel right. Uh, and it, in fact, it turned out that what had happened is it had almost tripled in size. After a week, um, it got worse and a bit more pronounced and I got more aware of the fact that there was something definitely wrong. So, I went to, so when I went to the doctor, he examined it and he said, yeah, one's definitely not right. I'd been told afterwards, I've had it for about 18 months because it also spread into my abdomen and was on its way up to my lungs. But I felt pain, but I suppose at that age you put it down to growing pains and, and all sorts and you just think, you do the bloke thing, it's nothing, it'll go. I'd never heard of testicular cancer. Never, not, never mind what to look for. Checking yourself regularly seems to be a sensible piece of advice. I don't think it has to be very often, certainly no more than once a month. But it's really a question of knowing what it normally feels like, so that if it changes, you can tell the difference. Have a bath, a long hot bath, or if you don't have a bath, have a long hot shower, um, and your scrotum relaxes, and your testicles descend a little bit more than normal, um, and just feel them. Put some soap on your hands if you want, and just feel them. You don't have to do it for very long. Um, but you just need to do it so that you get familiar with them. Um, and at first, if, at first you're just doing it to look for irregularities. And often those irregularities will be just normal. Um, there's, there's a little tube that supplies the, the sperm and at the top of that often you get a little bit of gristle. And testicles aren't perfect spheres, they're not squash balls, you know. So there's, it's a sense of becoming familiar with them so that then afterwards if there's something wrong, you spot it. Anything to do with your nuts or your, or your privates is, is obviously embarrassing. You get over it, you know. That's all there is to it. If we find a lump and it looks like it's a tumour, a testicular cancer, then the first treatment is to remove the cancer, usually by removing the testicle. Um, at the same time as the removal of the testicle, then a, an artificial testicle can be put in, so you may not notice much difference afterwards. And they said, do you want a fake one put in? And you, someone starts going through your head, well, shall I, shan't I? Is it going to feel abnormal? Is it going to feel okay? And it wasn't until you start speaking to other guys who are going through the same, I said, I, ha I said no because it could be something else that goes wrong. And, I mean, it's been nine years since, and I've got used to the fact there's only one there. If you're a young guy and you're not very settled in your head or you're very worried about how you seem uh, as a guy, then go for it. Um, but for me, I'm relatively settled, and I thought, well... It's not the same, it's, you know, you can't put it back. Um, most girls don't even notice. It's always weird when you take a girl home because you think, well, what if she notices or what if she says something or do I feel obliged to tell her? 
Uh, and so the first few times afterwards with different girls, I had these very sincere, sort of serious conversations, you know, while I was also at the same time trying to be sexy, saying, well, I, of course, you know, I, but not wanting to be a moaner and not wanting to be a whinger. It's quite a hard thing to drop in. And then after a while, I just, I just left it out. I didn't even say anything. No one's noticed, in fact. Um, which is actually almost a disappointment because I sort of want to tell them my brave story of my fight against cancer and things like that and how I maintain my virility throughout. When I was diagnosed, they sort of say the chemotherapy can make you infertile. We've got a facility where you can bank the sperm and it's there for future. And you're thinking, again, shall I, shan't I? Is, it, is there really a choice or no, there isn't? If you want to have kids, the only way to maybe guarantee it is to put something in the bank. So I went through that because after you've had the chemo, you can't go back and think, oh, I wish I'd done it. It could be too late, but fortunately we haven't had to use it and we've got a little four-year-old monster. Luckily we haven't needed to use it, but it's always there if we want to have another one we can't. The longer you leave it, the more likely is the cancer will spread and the more advanced that spread is likely to be and therefore the more intensive the treatment is. The worst thing you can do is to ignore a change um, Testis cancer is a very treatable, very curable disease. If it's detected early, as I say, the treatment is fairly minimal and is very, very successful. The more you worry about it and the longer you leave something, the worse it's going to get. Um, so anything, if ever you're in doubt, and especially if you think it might be serious, and especially if you've got reason to think it's serious, go to the doctor because you've got nothing to lose but your balls. <laughs>